This program is brought to you by Emory University. Mad Men is a, a big surprise. We're, we're used to seeing films about films. Television about television is, is also out there. There have been a lot of sitcoms that are about TV and a few dramatic series that have been about TV. Um, but what's kind of interesting is that Mad Men is about the advertising business and media is ultimately all about advertising. So it's a, a show that <clears throat> is very self-reflexive. It's kind of talking about media culture and the way that media culture is, is shaping history at the point at which the show is set. What's fun about this period of time, the, the early 1960s, the, the late 1950s, is we're seeing the television commercial finding itself as a form. And what's striking is how many conventions of early advertising are still with us. We have lots of ads that are going to connect ideas and lifestyles to products. So you'll have, um, there's this great um, campaign for Anison, uh, the pain reliever. And the, the motif of the Anison campaign is control yourself. Mommy, mommy, look what I do! Jimmy, please, not now, I'm too busy. Control yourself. Sure, you have a headache, tense, irritable, but don't take it out on him. One of the, one of the sort of legendary ad campaigns that becomes a, a minor point in the show is the Doyle Dane Birnbach Volkswagen campaign which uh, featured print ads which labeled their clients product uh, a lemon which of course means you know a junk car and this idea that you would take something negative that's being said about your clients product and actually make that the center of your ad discourse. This was a radically brave move um, and a hugely successful move. It's, it's going to be part of what attracts John F. Kennedy to make Doyle Dane Birnbach his national, um, the, the, the agency responsible for his national campaign. Since he was a lemon as a presidential candidate, you know, he's too young, he's too Catholic, he's too rich, he's too sleeping with people. Um, but the, 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 here's this idea, this is what advertising can do. Advertising can look you in the eye and, and tell you something um, <clears throat> that should make you steer away from the client's product and it'll have the inverse effect, it'll draw you in, this, this kind of reverse psychology. One of the powerful attractors that will be used by advertising agencies is to link a client's product with certain kinds of class or status related categories. You see this with the, the Heineken campaign, right, which is this, this idea is like we've got plenty of beer, we've got lots of domestic beer, beer is working class, right, beer is um, informal part of Sterling Cooper, the fictional ad agency in Mad Men, part of Sterling Cooper's plan for Heineken is actually to use its foreignness, one of the negative things about it, right, to make it a luxury brand. So it's something that classy people can serve to other classy people at a classy party. Enjoy life. Enjoy life. With Miller. High life. Fruit carefully. Distinctively. Wonderfully. Exclusively. And throughout advertising discourse, we see two great drivers desire and dread. Right? Either I'm going to play on your desire to be different, your desire to reconnect with the past, your desire um, for sex, your desire for success, or I'm going to play on your dread. 
there's something wrong with you, and it can only be solved by Jenny Craig. There's something wrong with you, and it can only be solved by Heineken. Actually, that's true. Heineken can solve a lot of things that are wrong with you, but only temporarily. Um, so desire and dread, and, and I can't help but see madmen playing on those same two levers, the levers of desire and dread, because you think about the world that's presented in the show. I'm not sure most of us would want to live in that world, though obviously many of us did at, in, in some way, at some point. And yet at the same time, there's something so seductive and so like, it repels us and it attracts us at the same time. A character like Don Draper is both a Cro-Magnon and a kind of vanished alpha male ideal that people are, are drawn to. And that's, that's a fascinating combination to, to serve up. Um, would we want to go back to a point where almost every gay person was so deep in the closet they could never come out and there was no problem using racial or religious slurs in the workplace and sexual harassment was practically an Olympic sport. Do we want to go back to that world? No. But at the same time, somehow we miss it. And we want to watch it. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.